In this video, I'm going to list five lenses I'd rather like Santa Claus to bring me this Christmas. Lenses I'd absolutely love to own, but probably won't buy myself because of their price or other reasons. I'll focus on M42 mount vintage lenses, which you can adapt to most digital cameras these days. But please add your own Santa Claus lenses below from whatever mounts you use, just in case he's watching. And after listing my top 5 lenses of 2023, I'd like to quickly show you 5 other very special lenses I tried this year. So here are my top 5 Santa Claus lenses for 2023. At number 5, having recently tried a Mare Optic Girlitz Primata 135mm f3.5 and enjoyed its soap bubble bouquet, I'd really like Santa to send me a trio plan 100mm f2.8, a lens that is, apparently, even better at this kind of look than the Primata. I'm unlikely to buy one myself. It costs a lot of money for what it does. That's why it's on my Santa list. At number 4, there's the Tokyo Kugaku Auto Topcore 58 f1.4. I keep coming across this lens, being described as the pinnacle of M42 Fast 50s. I'd like to compare it to other Fast 50s. Is it as good as people say it is, and why? I'm not doubting the validity of owner's enthusiasm about this lens, but I've tried numerous Fast 50s, and there are some great lenses with different characteristics. So what is so completely special about the Auto Topcore? Or will I be slightly disappointed, as I've been with some other highly rated old lenses? I'd rather not risk buying one, so it's on this list. At number 3, I'd like a Westragon 24mm f4. Not just for its optical qualities, which are supposed to be excellent, but also for its looks. It's one of the most beautiful lenses I've ever seen. 24mm is a good focal length for both crop and full frame sensors. However, I personally prefer using more modern wider angle lenses. So for me, this lens could be more of an indulgence rather than an often used lens. At number 2, I'd like a Carl Zeiss Jena Biotar 75mm f1.5, a lens whose optical design apparently inspired the extraordinary Helios 40. Now here it would be helpful if Santa could consult the experts and find the right version. I'm asking for an M42 mount lens, but would it be better to get the 75mm f1.5 early version, sometimes known as the missile, or the slim thin version, or the fat version? Or maybe even the very early exact amount version, which is the Biotar 8cm f2. On reflection, the very early Biotar 8cm, attached to the first real SLR camera, the Exacta 1 from 1936, that would be perfect, but it's probably asking for too much. And at number one, there's a lens that I've asked Santa for for years and years, and he hasn't delivered, but I guess while there's life, there's still hope. It's the Carl Zeiss Jena Pancolor. 55mm f1.4, a heavily radioactive lens that seems to produce absolutely gorgeous results, exactly the kind of wide open rendering I so enjoy looking at and so enjoy attempting to produce myself. I'm a big fan of the alternative lens in this series, the radioactive pan color 50mm f1.8, which I do own, but the f1.4 is at a different level altogether, and the extra reach between 50 and 55mm is a positive too. The problem is you have to pay a lot of money these days to get hold of one. I've only been talking about M42 lenses, but if I happen to venture onto a different film era mount, I think I'd ask for another ultra-fast, old-fast 50, as my Tomioka 55mm f1.2 is so much fun to use. One of these lenses, and maybe for another year. So those are my top 5 Santa Claus vintage lenses for 2023. But before ending the video, please don't leave, as I'd like to show you five very interesting M42 lenses I got the chance to try this year. First up is a Takuma Ultra Achromatic 85mm f4.5 lens. It's a rare and expensive lens, dating from around 1968. The elements are made of uncoated quartz fluorite rather than glass. This was designed to improve the transmission of ultraviolet rays as well as visible rays, reduce color dispersion and minimize chromatic aberrations. All characteristics are important to scientists using ultraviolet and infrared photography. I use the lens for a morning with a conventional camera rather than an IR converted camera. The results are okay, but this really is a very specialist lens, requiring specialist needs and not for me. However, it was absolutely great to have the chance to handle it and try it out. Next I got the chance to try a lens I've coveted for many years, a Carl Zeiss Ultron 50mm f1.8. This highly regarded lens has an unusual front element in that it's inverted. 
If you invert front elements, as some of us do with our Helios 44 2s, for example, then you get some pretty wild bouquet. But with this Zeiss, it produces excellent normal-looking results, especially stopped down. Now, the reason why I haven't bought one of these lenses before is that having looked at loads of images online, I'm not sure about its wide-open bouquet. It doesn't look as attractive to me as other Ultron design lenses I already own, most notably the Tacoma 55mm f1.8. Having tried the Zeiss and played with wide-open shots, I still don't see a strong reason to buy this lens. A few months later, I tried a Mare Optic Girl its Primo Plan 58mm f1.9, another lens much loved by many of its owners. It's quite an expensive old lens these days, so I wonder whether it could produce amazing images that I couldn't get from my existing lenses. Well, it's a fine lens, and a very handsome lens to put on your camera, and I do like the results very much. They have a lot of character, as do images from a number of other Mare Optic Girlitz lenses. And it's a lens that remains on my long list of lenses I'd like to own, but not in the top five. Then I had the opportunity to try a Carl Zeiss Jena Flektigen 35mm f2.4, an almost cult lens I've considered buying many times. But as I explained in my review of the lens on YouTube, I felt I had other good options to use instead. I must say I was very impressed with the Flektigen, its sharpness, its close-up shots, and its lovely wide-open bouquet. And maybe one day I will buy one. And finally, in this group of lenses from 2022, I tried a Mare Optic Girlitz Primatar 135mm f3.5. Described by its owner as his best worst lens. And I can see why. This is a fascinating lens. Maybe not the best stop down versus the competition, but a real soap bubble bouquet monster. And the main reason why I'm keen to try the trio plan as well. I included more information on the Primatar in a video on the best worst lenses if you're interested. So that's my top five Santa Claus list for 2023, plus some other lenses I tried this year in the M42 mount. I'd be very interested to read about the lenses that are at the top of your wish list, whether it's an ultra-fast 50, a wide-angle, or telephoto lens, or whatever. And any user comments on the lenses on my list will be much appreciated. So until the next time, all the best.